In the last video, we implemented classes to represent the passenger, the lobby, and the boarding line. Now let's quickly finish up what's inside the plane, and then we can get back to more of the reinforcement learning elements. Right after the boarding line, let me add the seat class. Here there is either a passenger in the seat, or there isn't. In the seat passenger function, if the passenger is holding luggage, that passenger is going to start stowing the luggage. We'll change the passenger status to stowing. If they're not holding our luggage, then we can go ahead and sit the passenger, change its status to seated, and then return true. And let me add one last class. This is the airplane row. It represents one row of seats inside the plane. In the try sit passenger function, we check if the current row contains the passenger's seat number. If it's found, then we'll go ahead and try to seat the passenger, which goes back to the function that we just saw up top in the seat class. Okay, that is it for all the supporting classes. Basically, all we're doing is taking the passenger from the lobby, putting them into the line, move them forward in the line, and then eventually seating them. Now we'll go back to the airplane ENV, which is our main reinforcement learning environment. Let me collapse these and expand this. Remember the main few functions that we absolutely need for reinforcement learning are reset, step, and render. So let's hop to reset, which is right here. Remember that we need to run simulations for thousands if not millions of times. Each one of those simulations is called an episode. And before each simulation, we need to call reset to reset the simulation environment to an initial state. So here, all we're doing is initializing the seats in the airplane, the lobby, and the boarding line. And then we're calling render to print out what the initial state looked like. Now, up until now, we haven't talked about this graphical interface. For reinforcement learning, this visualization is not absolutely necessary. We can just use simple printout statements to print something on the screen that represents our current state. After we are able to train an agent to optimize a faster way to board passengers, then we can come back and work on this visualization. Let's hop to the render function. If render mode is none, we'll do nothing. If render mode is set to terminal, Let's make sure we add terminal to our metadata. When we print stuff to the terminal, the render frames per second is not used. Okay, going back to the render function, I'm going to create an internal function called render terminal. All we're doing here is looping through the airplane rows, printing all the seats, printing the boarding line down here, and then printing the lobby down here. So very simple for loops here. Going back to reset, for the reset function, we must return two things. The first one is the observation, and the second is a dictionary of additional information you want to return to help you with the training. For this exercise, we're not returning anything extra, so I'm just going to return a empty dictionary here. For the observation, remember in the previous video, we talked in detail what we were going to return as an observation, which is basically our boarding line the position of the passengers, and what their current status is. I'm going to create an internal function called underscore get observation. Let me call that here. And all we're doing is looping through the boarding line. If there's no passenger in that spot, we put negative one and negative one. If there is a passenger there, we put their seat number, what they're actually doing at the moment, whether it's moving, stalled, or stowing luggage. We need to keep the size of the observation as a fixed length array. Remember, the observation feeds into a neural network, so it has to be fixed length. We can't vary the number of nodes going into the network. We'll return the list as a NumPy array of integers. Now that we have the reset function, a way to get the observation, and we also have a render function, we can go all the way down to our main we don't need to check the environment at the moment. We know it's incomplete, but we can start printing the observation, the initial state, and see what that looks like. I'll use gym.make to create an instance of our simulation environment using terminal as the render mode. 
And now we can use reset to initialize our environment. You know, since we're calling reset explicitly, we really don't need to call reset in the init function. Let me get rid of this. Go back to my main and I'll hit F5. I hit F5 again and it completed the run. By default, I'm using three rows by five seats. So here's my, uh, I'm using S to represent the empty seats and I'm printing the IO. This is, let's get back to the visual. You have the five seats, the IO, it's supposed to be in the middle, but it's much easier to print it on the side. We're not distinguishing the seats, so it doesn't matter where the IO is. Our boarding line is empty. The boarding line, which includes the IO, is empty, and it's empty here as well. And then in the lobby, I'm using P to represent the passenger. So there are 15 passengers here. Now, the last function that we need and the most important one is the step function. The step function is the one that executes the action. So it's the one that's going to orchestrate taking a passenger from the lobby, putting them in line, moving the line forward, and then seating the passenger. Once a passenger is seated, you're gonna see the S turn into a P here. This was my step function placeholder. Let me replace this. So remember that we're training our agent or the neural network to select which row of passenger to send to the boarding line. In this example, we got 10 rows, so the index are zero to nine. What we're doing is selecting which row, and then we'll grab a passenger to send to the line. Normally, this would be called action. I'll just call it row num for clarity. What we're doing here is we're moving a passenger from the lobby and adding the passenger to the boarding line. If there are still passengers waiting in the lobby, we'll move the line forward one step and then we'll calculate the rewards for taking that step. If there are no more passengers in the lobby, we'll go ahead and keep moving the line until everybody is seated. This is because if there are nobody else left in the lobby, there is no more decisions to make by the neural network. So that means there are no more actions left. And that's why we keep moving the line until everybody is seated. At the same time, we're accumulating. We're using plus equal to to accumulate the rewards. Whereas up here, we're only calculating the reward once because we're only moving the line forward one time. Here, we're checking if there's anybody left in the lobby or in the boarding line. If there is, that means boarding is still happening. The simulation is still going on, so it has not been terminated. Otherwise, once everybody has seated, then we terminate the simulation. The required returns are the observation, which we saw when we did reset, the reward that has been accumulated up top, the terminated flag, the truncated flag, which we talked about in the previous video that we are not going to use, and then the info dictionary, similar to reset, we're also not going to use. Now let me fill in the is onboarding function and also the move function, and then we'll take a closer look at the reward calculation. I'll go ahead and put is onboarding down here. And all it does is to see if there's any passengers left in the lobby, or if there's anybody still left in the line. Let me put in the move function. In this first portion of the move function, what we're doing is trying to check if the passenger is at the row that they're supposed to be at. If they are, they're gonna start stowing their luggage and eventually sit down. And once we process the people in the aisle, we can break out of this loop and then we move the line forward one spot. Okay, back to the step function. The last thing we need to talk about is the reward or calculate reward. Let me paste this in. I'll add calculate reward. The reward is very simple. At this moment, how many passengers are stalled? They can't move. If they can't move, it's a penalty. We put a negative sign here and then we add that 
to the number of passengers that can move. For example, in the current situation, this passenger is stowing their luggage and there's 10 people stuck behind this person. So we get a penalty of minus 10. Now, if there happened to be somebody up here that was not stuck and they could move, then we would add this count to the reward. But in this case, we get a reward of minus 10. Now, how do I know that this reward is going to work? I don't until I try it out. I try it out using just the penalty or just the number of passengers moving, but the solution isn't as good as having both of these combined as a reward. So the reward is definitely something that you need to play around with as you do the training. Okay, we implemented all the required functions. So now we have a complete environment. Let me go down to my main. If I do the check my environment now, hopefully it should pass. Let me comment this out. I'm gonna hit F5. All right, let's see. Okay, our environment checker did not report any problems. In fact, it tried to initialize the environment. Oh, and by the way, these warnings, you can safely ignore them. Now, before I do training on the environment, I should actually test my environment. The checker only checks if I implemented the stuff I'm supposed to implement. It doesn't check whether I implemented it correctly or not. Join me in the next one and we'll test the simulation environment.